Good morning, everybody. And we have visitors from far away as in Mozambique, Netherlands, and in Kent, which I assume is somewhere in England. And other countries not mentioned, I don't want to leave here. We haven't acknowledged uh, Johannesburg. Dublin, but everybody are most welcome, those who are from far field of Ottery, Rakanta, good to have you with Kreifontein, Ireland. It's good to be back on the concert Our service continues on page 104. Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us pray the colleague for purity. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthy magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Jesus said, Come to me, all who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
Let us confess our sins. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone, for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Almighty God, who gives all who truly repent and have mercy on you, pardon your sins and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So we pray with the colleague for this day. O God of new beginnings, give us courage to turn and joyfully follow you in the new adventures of faithful service through Jesus Christ, our light and our salvation, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading, a reading from, from Jonah, Jonah, chapter 3, a reading from, from verse 1. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, saying, Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began going to the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on a sackcloth. And when God saw what they did, how they turned from evil, from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them. And he did not do it. Hear the word of the Lord.
The second reading is from 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 29-31. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be as though they had none, and those who mourn as though they were not mourning, and those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing, and those who buy as though they had no possessions, and those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Mark. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea. For they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As, As he, he went, went a little further, he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boats, mending the nets. Immediately he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the Gospel of Christ.
name of God, beloved. The world as we know it is passing away. The last verse of the reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 7. The world as we know it is passing away. The world as Jesus knew it had been prefaced in his formative moments of calling and of reaching out to his disciples, building up this contingency of men and women who would constitute the remnants when the earth is bereft of his presence. And then there is the comfort of the Pentecost, the outpouring of the Spirit that enables them to be the Christ bearers in their lives and to what we inherit today as people of the Church of God. So, hardly had Jesus been baptized, the world as he knew it was marked by the arrest of his cousin John. And there's an immediacy where the other Gospels have got a genealogy, others have got a more philosophical understanding of the word, but John is very specific. There's an urgency. He goes from in the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus. And then when we look for a few verses, he's calling the two sets of brothers. There is James and John. They are the sons of a man of means who is enabled to employ others. And the other two disciples are those who are self-employed or maybe they're working for other people. But in the context of calling, we are living in, in this time that Jesus is deferring or the gospel is deferring to. It's a time of heavy taxation to fish in the Sea of Galilee or the Lake of Galilee, you needed a permit and you needed to negotiate that with the tax collectors, one of which would be whom Jesus would call. But when we see almost in this casual way that these men leave their craft and they leave the responsibilities of, of home, they go. But the world in which they lived and the world that they knew was changing in that moment of calling. And they respond with an immediate conviction. We do not know the final nuanced aspect of their response. Oh yeah, Jesus says, come and follow me. In the Ngori tradition, this is Zulu, the greeting is a very simple one. Sabunan or Sabwana, and the recipient of the greeting always say is Yebo. So I see you, and then you respond yes, and by acknowledging that you are seen, you acknowledge a relationship between the greeter and the one who receives it. And when one says Sabunan, you acknowledge that person as a history, that person as a lineage, that person as a dignified place in the eyes of God to belong and to share us and a common life with you. So in that moment of calling it is a Sabunani greeting of Jesus where he embraces the ones and he says by calling them that he has found them worthy by the time they meet him at the Sea of Galilee, it would not be the first instance of the encounter. They would have heard by word of mouth something of the nature of his birth. They would have known about his exile into Egypt. They would have known of some stories floating from, from, from the Galilee, from the village of Nazareth. Some of the, the folklore, some of the urban or local village legend about this young exceptional person and so that moment when he's walking along the shore and he says come and follow me they are embraced in a moment of belonging 
that establishes very firmly their place in the world as they knew it because the world as they knew it had to be changed. And they want to be part of that foot soldier cadre that is deployed to serve, to bold, to overcome, and to bring newness. So when they are seen, they are called. The other aspect of our ability to discern and to be able to be disciples, because there's a very immediacy that links us really to what is happening in a few weeks' time of Ash Wednesday. The words here turn from your wicked when believe the good news. Believe the good news when we are cross for the ash. Believe the good news. Turn from your wicked ways and believe the good news. So we are being brought into the urgency of Ash Wednesday and then what follows in the Lenten season. But for now, in this moment of pre-transformation, Jesus calls them. How are they able? How, how do they listen? What do they hear? In 1985, I was a deacon in the township of Ocean View, and I was very blessed to have as my mentor and first vector, Father Bob Lamar. On a Thursday, we would have a you, we would have, we would have Wednesday morning, we would have Eucharist, and then on Thursday, we would do visitation to the sick, and we would, there would be four people or four families who visited in Ocean View, and then later on, in one of the flats, we would have a Bible study, a prayer meeting, and Father Bob would lead the prayer meeting, and while I'm driving, then you quickly look at the text, and in that period of silence and reflection, he presents later this gathering of 10, 12 women in one of the flats there above Ocean View on the, on the side of the incline of the hill of Slanko. He will present a most beautiful, easily composed, profound sermon that always intimidated me because I was standing so much on the green side of the ministry. And I asked him, please enable me to become the way you are because I could hear my sermons. I was like, I was, I found I, I was in a spin cycle of a washing machine and I didn't know how to press stop. You might even be concluding in three minutes now. It's only later as I got to know Father Bob a bit better. That, that moment of erudite insight, a partial depth of wisdom, comes out of a lifelong suffering, dedication. That moment of my encounter with him in his own life had been prefaced by many struggles from his hometown in Grahamstown, now Wakanda, and then in Port Elizabeth, and all that takes him to Mannenberg, and then he went to Ocean View, and then the last years of his ministry at St. George's in Silverton. It was a lifetime of ministry, and of pain, and of struggle, and of coming to that particular moment of his own Saunani, of the way that he is seen. So, beloved, each one of us, as we have heard read, in the first Corinthians, where the conclusion that Paul says, for the world as we know it is passing away. Knowledge is generational bound. Our grandparents had a certain understanding of the changing world as they knew it. Those who were immersed into the cave flats and gangland of a given period, the world as they knew it, and the world today as we know it, has its own chaos, its own decision, its own crisis. And you and I must be able to stand 
and look at the closed door of the moment of time and decide we remain on this side secure with our little knowledge of the future or do we go as disciples to respond to the call come and follow me and open the closed door with conviction a bit of trepidation but when we do that we embrace all that has prepared us, all that has enabled us to respond to God's call so that we can be part of the transformation because as St. Augustine said so many decades ago that justice has got two beautiful daughters. One is anger and the other one is courage. Anger at injustice at the way things are and the courage to change it. Our responsibility when we self-identify as God's children and as God's chosen by baptism and confirmation and of our identification with the cross of Calvary and the resurrection when we identify as that, we are called to be people who transform the world. So I ask you just to bow your heads in silence and scrutinize where you and I find ourselves at this moment in this world as we know it. Lead me, O Lord, in heart and mind to where I may see me as you do. Amen. That as we affirm our faith, we believe in one God.
Let us pray. We pray for the church that we may recognize that the reign of God has begun and make all our activities signs of our Christian discipleship. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for educational institutions. Eternal God, your son sit among scholars, asking them questions. Bless all schools, colleges, and universities that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may praise you as a source of truth. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for ourselves, for greater openness to the word of God, that we may allow the word to penetrate our hearts. Call us to life and motivate us to serve God lovingly. Lord, in your mercy. We seek a deepening of our prayer life. For a greater love for the word of God, that we may take time to read, ponder, and pray with the scriptures so that we may deepen our relationship with God and take on the mind and the heart of Christ. Lord, in your mercy, for the grace of courage, that the Spirit of God will make us confident in sharing God's message so that our lives will be an invitation to others to encounter God today. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who are alienated or disconnected from God, that the Spirit will spark a new flame of faith in their hearts and open them to a new relationship with God. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for a greater care for the earth and for all its resources, that God will guide us in being good stewards of the earth and protecting its resources for future generations. Lord, in your mercy, for all who have experienced persecution of their faith, that God, God will give them the strength to remain faithful and protect them from further harm. Lord, in your mercy, for all who are suffering, that God will protect all who have fled violence, guide the homeless to safer shelter, and open the pathways for food, for water, and medicine to those who are in need. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for peace and justice in the world, that God will change the hearts of those inflicting violence and open opportunities for dialogue, so that peace and justice may be established. Lord, in your mercy. We thank you, O Holy and Blessed Trinity, for the many colors, cultures, and customs that we share in this world. In our differences, unite us by your love. Enable us to act together to uphold the life and to make, us, to make this world a just and peaceful household for all humanity. Today we ask you, O oh God, hear our prayer and grant us your peace. Amen. We stand for the sharing of the peace.
And so may the peace of the risen Lord be with you always.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, the church has given us, and you and hands have made, for us it becomes the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, for us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. And also Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Delight and indeed our duty and joy. Lord and Heavenly Father, God Almighty and Eternal, always and everywhere to give thanks to Jesus Christ, your only Son, our Lord. And today we give you thanks because in coming to dwell among us as the Word made flesh, Jesus revealed the radiance of your glory and brought us out of darkness into your own marvelous light. And therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we acclaim you and declare the greatness of your glory. We praise now and forever sing. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. Opstanden in die Dwelle, in die Opfahrt, in die Jammel, 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 in
The bread which we break is not a sharing of the body of Christ. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crowns into your table. But you are the same, Lord, whose nature is always that mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to be the curse of your dear Son. Draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which He gave for you, and His blood, which He shed for you. Feed and even in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Be all the way up.
give thanks unto the Lord, whom God has graced. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as the living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world of the Holy Spirit to learn and work to your praise. Peace of God, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds to the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Please stand. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Hymn number 51, sorry about that. We all need to go over the good hymn.